So in chapter seven, we're going to start doing financial statements. So we talked in chapter six, as we did our worksheet about our balance sheet and our income statement. And those are a couple of financial statements that we're going to do. This first unit, first lesson we're going to do is going to be over income statements. But before we get there, um, businesses have to make decisions at every year. They compare data from past years or past quarters, and they make decisions about the business. Should they in try to do something to increase sales? Should they try to cut their expenses? What are the things that they have to do? And they use the financial statements to make those decisions. There are also people outside of the business like the government or investors that might want some of that financial data. So the area of accounting that focuses on giving stuff to external users is called financial accounting. And the information for internal users is called managerial accounting. So we're gonna look at three financial statements in this chapter, the income statement, statement of owner's equity, and the balance sheet. A couple of gap rules. So some gap rules that we need to go over for this unit. Full disclosure is basically just says that you're going to put all the information into the financial statements that you have to. Um, full disclosure basically says this is everything that we did and all the financial information that's necessary. If you didn't use full disclosure, it'd kind of be like leaving out pages of a book. You wouldn't have the whole um, picture of what you need. The accounting period cycle just basically says that you're going to do financial statements at the same time. In the book, we're going to do them monthly. In the real world, you might do them quarterly or even yearly. And then going concern just says that most people start a business with the thought process that that business is going to go on indefinitely until they either die or pass it on to somebody else because nobody's going to take their time and effort and money to start a business with the thought that, oh, I'm going to do this for a year and then I'm going to do something else. At least most people don't. So the income statement, which is what we're going to focus on in this lesson, um, basically gives the financial information that tells what the progress of the business. How is it progressing? Where did you start? Where are you at the end? How is the business progressing? And to do that, we have to match our expenses with our revenue, which is basically saying that the revenue earned and the expenses incurred to earn that revenue are reported in the same fiscal period. So our income statement, we get the information for our income statement from our worksheet, from the income statement columns of our worksheet. And so you start by bringing your account titles over. So starting with sales down through expenses, those are our income statements. So we talked about these when we did the worksheet that the assets, liabilities and owner's equity tell us that our accounting equation is in balance. So their balance sheet. And then our revenue, sales, and our expenses tell us whether or not we had an income. So there are income statement accounts. So we get the titles from the account title column and we get the amounts from the income statement columns. So the heading of our income statement is just like the heading of our worksheet. It's a three line heading. It starts with the name of the company on the first line, the name of the statement on the second line, and the date on the third line. Those are centered at the top of the income statement and the income statement, because it tells us the progress of the business, where were we at the beginning? Where are we at the end? It covers the whole month. It's going to say for month ended. If you were doing this quarterly, it would say for quarter ended. So this is the body of our, our income statement. And to start out with, I need to point out that even though we have two columns here, they are not technically debit and credit columns. They are a column where you do math, things that need to be added together, and a totals column, not debit and credit. So we start out, the very first line of your income statement is going to be the section heading revenue. The word revenue starts as close to the line on the left as you can with a colon at the end. That tells us that that's a section heading. And then there's no amount there. Then we list our revenue account, which right now we just have sales. And it's indented a little bit to show that that's an account under that section heading. And then because we only have one sales account, that total is going to go in our total column. Then we're going to come down to the very next line and we're going to put the, 
word expenses to start our expenses section. That's a section heading. So just like revenue, it starts as close to the line as you can with a colon. Then you list all of your expenses indented just a little bit like sales because they fall under this heading. Since we have multiple expenses that have to be added together, they go in the first column with a line underneath them to show that we're going to do math. Then we put the words total expenses. We add those up and you put the total in the second column to show we're going to do math over here. Then you just do a subtraction. Since our revenue is bigger than our expenses, we're gonna subtract and the amount you get is the net income and it should match the net income on the worksheet. And then you do a double rule to show that you've proven that. Now we have to do a couple of other things on the income statement and those are what we call financial ratios. We want to know what percentage of our income, our revenue, goes to expenses and what percentage goes to net income. And we do that with financial ratios and they use, businesses use that to analyze whether or not their business is doing what's supposed to be and is in line with other businesses in that industry or whether they're not. To do those, you take the amount of total expenses and you divide it by the revenue, and that gives you a percentage. So let me get my calculator up here. When we do that, you're gonna take your 2658, which is your expenses, divided by your 5820, which is your revenue, and that gives you, sorry about that, Go back here, get into my calculator there. 2658 divided by 5820, and that gives you a decimal. To turn that decimal into a percent, you move that decimal over two spots. You should have learned that in like fourth grade. And then we want to take that to the first decimal place. And so it's 45 point, since it's 0 0.67, we're going to round that six up to seven, so 45.7. And then you do the same thing for net income. You always divide by the sales amount. Type it in correctly. And it gives you, this one is 54.3. We don't round the three because that's a two. These two amounts added together should equal 100, which is what the sales one will be up there at the top. In this example, we have multiple revenue accounts and we have a net loss. So just kind of showing you how you would do that if you have multiple revenue accounts. If you have more than one sales account, you're gonna do just like expenses and you're gonna list them both in the left column and you're gonna add them together to do your total revenue. And in this example, we have a net loss because our total expenses is bigger than our total revenue. So again, you do the math, but you list that as a net loss. So when you do your ratios, you're still dividing them by the total revenue. So if it's if 24 127 is 113.8% of the revenue, then your net loss is going to be the 13.8% in a negative and that's why it's shown in parentheses your total revenue is still always going to be the 100 percent and that's how you do an income statement